Hello, this is Harlan. Welcome to my wet felted earrings in ball cap findings class. This class requires both needle felting and wet felting, but none of it is particularly difficult. You should know how to cut and card fiber and how to form simple shapes, such as a pod used for these earrings. I love drop earrings, but it is often difficult to find earring findings that add an extra touch of quality to my own work. If you've taken any of my jewelry classes, you may have noticed that I pay attention to what polymer clay artists are doing. Fiber doesn't always lend itself to such projects, but sometimes it does. The findings used in this class were designed for polymer clay, but they can be used with fiber. Let me show you how. If this is your first time taking a class on Craft Art EDU, I highly recommend that you watch Donna Cato's Making the Most of Your Craft Art EDU class. There isn't anything unusual about the materials needed for this class. If you've done needle felting and done wet felting, you will probably have everything on this list, with maybe the exception of toothpicks, and the earring findings. These earring findings are very nice quality. I love the look of these which have been textured and are of gold-toned metal, but there are other variations in color and texture. You really should go look them over and decide which you like best. All of the earring findings, similar to the ones I'm using, have a protruding metal rod in the ball cap. I'm sure that's very helpful for securing whatever is added to finish these earrings. Unlike polymer clay, where you can create a hole easily in the raw clay, with wet felted fiber, we need to create that hole earlier in the construction process. It's not all that hard. Measuring fiber accurately isn't always easy, but sometimes it's important. For this project, we're making earrings, so they probably should match. Choose your base color and pull off a length of fiber about 7 or 8 inches long. Now, please note that fiber in this form, which I call rope, can vary in density from color to color, from ball of rope to ball of rope. If you happen to have fiber rope that is very dense, it will result in a larger earring than mine. If your rope is rather thin, you'll have smaller earrings. Blunt cut the fiber just to the middle of those feathery ends that happen when you pull off a section of fiber. Blunt cut two sections of fiber, each one inch in width. This is a pretty good method for getting equal quantities of fiber. You can set the rest of the fiber aside for some other project. Take one of the blunt cut sections of fiber and card it with your wire dog brushes. Well, you can card the other section of fiber at this time, just do not combine them. Keep them separate. Take one of the carded fiber sections and roll it up into a tight log. Tack it together with your needles. Insert the tip of your round toothpick into one end of the fiber log. The tip needs to only extend into the fiber a little deeper than the prong in the ball cap on the earring findings. Carefully needle to refine and reduce the shape of the fiber. Keep rotating your work so you're working all sides evenly. Avoid hitting your needles on the toothpick. Now, wet felting the fiber is going to reduce the shape, but you have more control over that shape when you needle felt to refine the shape first. Keep refining your earring foundation until it is nicely firm. The top of the pod that portion that eventually will be fastened into the ball cap should be at least as wide as the ball cap. If you were to remove the toothpick at this time, 
which you should be able to do and be able to reinsert it and to test the top of the pod on the ball cap it should be a little too large to fit that's just how it should be at this stage repeat the previous steps to make a matching earring foundation or make a different shape if you like an asymmetrical look you have many options for decorating your earring foundations. You can use embroidery floss and sew a simple design. The floss won't shrink at the same rate as the merino when the foundation is wet felted, which makes them for very interesting results. For these earrings, I decided to decorate with some cut and carded fiber that I've pulled off as a faux yarn. Carefully secure your design fiber to the foundation. Be sure to avoid hitting the toothpick. I put five orange stripes on my earring foundations. You can do fewer stripes if you desire. You can do stripes of different colors, or you could do polka dots. When I was securing my stripes to the foundation, I let some of the added fiber extend past the point. Using my needles, I gather those fluffy fibers together and create a new point of just the added fiber. Decorate the other earring foundation to match or not to match as you please. Now it's time to wet felt, as I'll show you in the following video. Here we are at my sink in my craft room. I've got two containers in my sink. The one furthest away from us has cold water with vinegar in it, and the one closest to us has hot water, very hot water. There you saw me putting soap on my hands. I've already soaked my, my earrings in the hot water, and now I'm getting them soapy, and I'm going to begin agitating them on my bamboo reed mat here and you don't want to just roll them on the mat if you were to do that you would just make them longer and longer uh, which isn't actually the shape we want I mean unless you want that of course you can do that um, so what I did here is I'm pinching I'm twisting I, I have to do a lot of manipulating with my fingers uh, you can't simply roll against the mat um, you will see sometimes when I am rolling on the mat, I am trying to limit how far that tip can can move um, in order to try and, and keep the sh overall shape rather squashed. So it's a, it's a lot of manipulating with your fingers, uh, making use of the mat, uh, the reed mat, as you can, but a lot of twisting, pinching, squishing, uh, rolling in, in your hands. It's a little awkward because you have the toothpicks in place, but it is not that difficult. You just have to keep working at it and try and work on both of them fairly evenly. I mean, all obvious, you, you would want your earrings to be the same size, and we very carefully measured our fiber when we started this project in order to try and achieve very symmetrical earrings. If they're a little off, no one's going to notice. No one's going to take them off of your ears and, and hold them right next to one another. So you don't have to be super duper precise. One thing you may notice uh, when I applied the stripes earlier in the class, they were straight. And because I am twisting, uh, squashing, and manipulating, I, I am twisting those straight lines so that they actually spiral around the earring and I liked that. I knew that would happen and I wanted that to happen. I mean it's something that you you do uh, with polymer clay too if you happen to do polymer clay. Uh, it, it's it's nice. It looks very pretty. It's easier to do it by twisting which you have to do anyways just to felt 
these earrings properly, but um, it's easier to, to do by this twisting than it would be to try and apply the fiber nicely and evenly uh, to make those spirals. Not impossible, but it's just, it's easier doing it this way. Might as well make use of the wet felting. After I have felted these uh, for several minutes, I mean, it really doesn't take a lot of time, but you, you want to keep working at it. And then um, what you will see me doing in a while is I'm going to uh, rinse the soap out of them, and then I'm going to, there, I'm beginning, I'm dunking it uh, into the water that has the cold water with vinegar and I'm going to go back and forth between the very hot and the very cold because that will help full the fibers, that will help tighten them together. Um, there are other things that you can do to full fiber, but that should be good enough. I'm going to dry them. We'll reshape them after I've uh, gotten most of the moisture out and put them someplace warm to dry. Thank you. After wet felting, blot out the excess moisture from your earring foundations, reshape as needed, and place somewhere to dry. Once the foundations are dry, trim away any flyaway fibers, especially at the ends that will be secured into the ball caps on the earring findings. A sweater shaver is a wonderful tool for jobs like this. Never apply pressure to the surface when using a sweater shaver. Just glide it over the surface and let it whisk away those fuzzy fibers you do not want. Use a good quality craft glue. Apply just enough to cover the interior surface and the prong on the ball cap. I used a craft glue that sets up faster than normal craft glues. You don't want too much glue. You certainly don't want glue oozing out of the ball cap when you insert the foundation. Carefully insert the foundation and position it so that it is straight. Hold it in place for 20 to 30 seconds. Set the earrings to dry. I used my clover brush mat to hold the earrings in this inverted position while they dried. That worked perfectly. If you do not have a brush mat, you might take a piece of styrofoam and then use that to hold the earring findings. My earrings ended up being about three inches long, which may be too long for your taste. To make smaller earrings, you would use less fiber. The smaller earring on the right was embellished with embroidery floss after it had been wet felted and before it was secured to the ball cap. You might also sew on beads. There are so many options once you have made the wet felted foundation with the hole to fit these earring findings. I love the look of these earring findings. Fiber and metal look beautiful together when combined in this way. Thank you for watching my wet felted earrings in ball cap findings class. I hope you found it informative. For Craft Art EDU, this is Harlan. If you enjoyed this class, you may be interested in my needle and wet felted beads class. Be sure to check out my other craft art EDU classes in needle felt and in oil painting.